All right, uh, here we are. Um, I really never thought I'd be commenting on David Hockney, uh, but I do thank you, Faye, for the question. I, I say that, you know, having read his book, I mean, as much as I could take of it, and I really don't mean to be dismissive. I, there are several levels on which I find the, the David Hockney thing uh, uh, frustrating, and it's not personal. I mean, in any way, I've never met him. I don't know anything about his, um, you know, his... I just, you know, I'm, a, I'm an eyeball. I'm just like you, everybody else on the street, you know, and I'm saying, you know, if it was that, I would never become a painter. If, if that's the model of what this art form is or is becoming, I've got other things to do with my life. I, I hate to be negative <laughs> and just starting this out. But so this is the question coming from Faye. And I do thank you, Faye. She said, and she said, thanks, many thanks for this series of talks. I want to ask... What do you think of David Hockney's bigger picture exhibition at the Royal Academy? Now, I didn't go to it. I went online and looked at it. I watched uh, videos of it as well as just looking at pictures. She said, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Hockney thinks long and hard about perspective, composition, and design. And yes, color. He deals with uh, the observation of nature, the changing seasons. Isn't this the best starting point? Um, so... Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll start with the last question first. If you say this, meaning David Hockney, no, it's not the best starting point for a student. Historically, the best starting point is the mastery of nature, as you see it in front of you. Uh, David Hockney is a product of the art schools. Uh, I remember having a visit from a portrait painter, a wannabe portrait painter in uh, England, and he, and, and he said, he came to me, he's not far from my age, this is about 20 years ago or so, and he came over to the States and I met with him and I don't even remember the co occasion why we even ran into each other, but um, he said, so because David Hockney was now painting portrait type things, heads, now it was okay to be a representational painter again. It was okay to be a figurative painter again. Now I don't know what it is about that, that makes it okay because David Hockney is doing something. And I don't know why this museum, the Royal Academy, I, you know, and watching the video, I mean, they obviously, they, they're, they're allowing this one guy to use their, opera, their, their whole thing to dominate an art culture in England. I mean, like, it, totally dominating it. And, and it's, he's just doing stuff as he feels like it and developing his own little ideas. I mean, like, you know, where's the assize of time? And in fact, what is even the purpose of museums? This is not about work that we consider great. You know, there's two kinds to me of categories for museums. One is archaeological stuff that's just there because it's amazing and it's old, you know, or even just old. And the other one is because it's survived, is the word was fold the assize of time. <laughs> well, there's no way that Hockney has survived the assize of time. But I started saying at the beginning, the reason I find Hockney uh, not the guy you want to follow is because of his writing about the, the lenses and his belief that you can't actually draw accurately without lenses. And I mean, it's just completely wrong. I mean, I'm one of those people who can, and, and, uh, and they're all around. We, that's what we studied as students. We studied how to draw accurately without a lens. Uh, and it's not, and, and the fact that you are, it actually a conflate, or, or there's no evidence that Aang used a lens, and certainly not if he ever did once, he didn't use it in any consistent way. There's no way to, to believe, there's, no, there's just no, no evidence of that, whatever. Uh, uh, the idea of using a lens, I mean, by the way, there seems to be possibly some evidence that something like a lens or a tracing glass is being used by Holbein. I can't deny that. It does look like that. And we know that Vermeer used the camera obscura. But don't keep extending that and extending that. I mean, for crying out loud, just don't do it. Um, our history of American painting is full of good portrait painters who don't use lenses. I mean, how do sculptures, how do sculptors sculpt without lenses? I mean, like, what do they do? Do they make body casts? I mean, what's the strategy for those guys? It's just, there never was one. And yet they make precise likenesses when they want to of a person standing before them. Some by the exotic measuring devices and stuff that just come into the sight size world of painting today, but mostly it's simply by the use of the eye and by observing relationally that would include things like measurements. How, do, how does this relate to that? How do the width feel to the height and that sort of thing in various ways? But, um, but no, and then the next thing you'd find is then how do you get color? And you know, how do you get color relations? You know? I think what probably disappointed me more than anything with what I looked at there was his exotic uh, use of the camera as his source now. 
um, mastery of nature would have made him not even want to do that. Nature is so rich and to, I, you know, so we're in the world of art now. And I mean art meaning quote unquote modern art. That's the world we're in. The dominate all the art schools and people like Hockney know how to play the game and know how to make their ways. So yeah, I mean, that's just, that's just the way I take it from this point of view. I think you had another point to your question there and then I'm out of here, this one. Um, he thinks long and hard about perspective, composition, and design. I, these pictures are so big, I don't know how you, how you even think about those things, but there isn't anything. I mean, if all those things that I've learned about design, I don't see uh, Hockney doing much of them, the studies I've made and that sort of thing and the way I work. I don't see much of a connection, so I don't think I would actually use his stuff to study design. I really don't think I do. I do like the way he talks from time to time, and he, you know, his very idea that uh, there's that painting is there's a certain search for poetry, you know, which is another word for music in my mind. But people mean that in so many different ways that I don't really know how to uh, how to think about it. So, no, I would actually, in answer to your question, I would say go any way except toward David Hockney if you want to find out how to become a good painter. Study nature humbly. Drop art. In the words of Robert Douglas Hunter, stop trying to make art. Just do your job. Your job as a student is to be a master of the visual world. Just sit there and paint. A mile of canvas, you know, that sort of classic uh, thing. A mile of canvas, well-directed practice, you know, uh, and you'll have the skills that you need to do whatever you find yourself wishing to do. I think a, my, I will end with this one wonderful little quote from Velasquez, and he talks about the painters um, that were thinking like Velasquez. Uh, uh, sorry, R.E.M. Stevenson wrote this book about Velasquez, and he's talking about the painters who were thinking like Velasquez. And uh, he said what they did is they sat before nature, and I would say like, I think I'd like to say like Wordsworth, just sat in the woods and sat before nature, and they painted, and they painted, and they painted, and they drew forth, they searched out nature until they found music and he said till they found poetry and I think that's your model not David Hockney and the art model of today whatever that poetry is that I can't even quite fathom uh, so yeah with no meaning any offense but no you're talking to students now and I'm talking to people that have studied with me or that are studying out there no nothing in the art schools is the way nothing I've seen in fact I know that the the uh, Beaux-Arts doesn't even teach drawing anymore um, I don't know if they teach lens tracing or what, you know, maybe, I don't think they do any of that stuff. I know that when I, my, some of my students were working at Mass College of Art at one point or another, or the museum school in Boston, they, they were using the Xerox machine for any time they need a likeness, blow up something on a Xerox machine and trace it and stuff like that. So all the technologies are taking over the skill of seeing. And the skill of seeing, you know, that's time you spend before nature is where you begin to have to visit the relational world, is where, which is where the music lies in our world. So. You know what I mean? Think hard and long about taking advice from art schools today. Uh, look at the product that they bring forward and ask yourself, is that what brought you to the dance? If it is, have a good day, and I do mean that sincerely. But, uh, and, but if it isn't, and it's actually in other places, anywhere from Michelangelo and those guys all the way down through the Boston School Impressionists, um, that would be, you'd be barking up the wrong tree. So thank you, Faye, um, and uh, good luck with your, with your education. Now, if you all will, please subscribe, um, uh, share, like, don't like, <laughs> uh, and make comments as we go along. Uh, it's much appreciated. Thank you very much. I do look forward to seeing you next time.